Hello everyone. This is part two of my AO46 flight stick video. Part one show what is possible. And here in part two, I walk you through the setting up your Mr. AO46 and some games. You need a flight stick and keyboard for this. So make sure you have both. Now let's get to it. The first step is to define your flight stick controls in Mr. Main. So boot up your Mr. and navigate to define joystick buttons. Here, I'm asked to press right on the D-pad of the controller I want to configure. I treat the hat switch on my flight stick as a D-pad, so I'll hit right on it. Now, I'm asked to tilt right on stick 1. I move the flight stick to the right. Here, I'm asked to tilt down on stick 1. I'll move the flight stick down. For stick 2 test, I'll press the right rudder button. I'm using a Thrustmaster T-Flight Hotas X controller. The rudder consists of these two buttons here, usually used for moving an aircraft side to side. The location of it can vary depending on your controller, so refer to your controller's manual to see its location. And when asked to tilt down for stick 2, I'll move the throttle down. And the throttle is this second stick that I can move up and down. It's used to control an aircraft's speed. The next step is to assign the D-pad and action buttons. I assign the D-pad to the same directions on my controller's hat switch. This is the hat switch on my controller. On flight sims, it's mostly used to change your point of view, so you can look up, down, left, or right inside of the cockpit of your aircraft. And the A, B, X, and Y buttons to buttons 1, 2, 3, and 4 on my flight stick. It doesn't really matter which button, it's more important to configure the buttons correctly in AO486. I ignore the L, R, Start, and Select buttons by hitting space on a keyboard. I also ignore the mouse actions. For menu, I set it to a combination of buttons 1 and 5. For menu OK, I set it to button 1. And for menu Back, I set it to button 2. Finally, I'm asked to tilt stick 1 to the right and then tilt it down. So we're done with helping Mr. recognize the flight stick. The next step is to configure it in AO486. So load up AO486. This tutorial assumes you already have DOS installed. If you don't, check out my video on how to do this. I'll provide a link in the description. When AO486 is loaded, bring up the menu and select the hardware option. Then move down to where the joystick options are. Set joystick type to four buttons. Joystick mode to two sticks. Joystick one should be enabled and joystick two should be disabled. Now save your settings. Then go to define AO486 buttons. Again, I set the right, left, down, and up directions to the same directions on the flight sticks hat switch. Buttons one, two, three, and four I assign to the same buttons on my flight stick. I ignore start, select, L1, L2, R1, and R2 by hitting space on my keyboard. When asked if I want to set up alternate buttons, I select no. Save the settings again, and we're done configuring the core. But we still are not done yet. Every individual game must also be configured, and each will have its own menu on where to configure controls. Not all games will support the flight stick, throttle, and rudder. Some will only support the flight stick and two buttons, so you will have to use the keyboard for throttle and rudder controls. It's also not guaranteed that all games will have controller support. I will show you how to configure a couple of games which will give you the general idea on how to configure any game. But first, the quickest way to test that the flight stick is working is by using a DOS test program called JoyCheck. I'll provide a link to it in the description so you can add it to your DOS install. Here is the JoyCheck program loaded. You can see two boxes, with crosshairs towards the top left. Ignore that the crosshairs are not centered within these two boxes. This didn't matter when I set up the games. Right now, I have the joystick throttle and rudder all physically centered, so I'm going to assume the current positions of the crosshairs are the centered positions. If I move the flight stick around, you can see that the left crosshair is moving. And if I move the throttle up and down, the right crosshair moves up and down. When I press the rudder left and right, the crosshair moves left and right. I'll also test the four buttons I set up on my flight stick. And they work too. So I confirmed that my controller is working. Now I will show you how to set up some games. 
The first game I'm going to show you how to set up is Aces of the Pacific. Okay, so here I have the game loaded. I'll select other options, then select preferences. Set joystick to on. Under the flight control area, click on flight and then select joystick one. This sets the flight stick portion of my controller to joystick one. Select rudder and set it to joystick two. Select throttle and also set it to joystick two. Now we need to calibrate the controller, so click on the calibrate button. Select joystick one and then click on accept. Let's follow the calibration instructions for joystick one, which is a flight stick. When asked to center the joystick and press any button, leave your flight stick centered and press the trigger. Here we're asked to move the joystick to the upper left and press any button. I'll move my joystick to the upper left direction and press the trigger. Next, I'm asked to move the joystick to the lower right and press any button. So I'll move my flight stick to the lower right direction and press the trigger. Finally, I'm asked to center the joystick again and press any button. I'll leave my flight stick centered and then press the trigger. I'm done calibrating the flight stick. Now I need to calibrate the throttle and rudder. Click on calibrate again. Select joystick 2 and then click on accept. For these instructions, to center, I leave my throttle in the middle and don't press any of the rudder buttons on my controller. Then press the trigger. When asked to move to the upper left, I'll move my throttle all the way forward and also fully press the left rudder button and press the trigger. When asked to move joystick to the lower right, I'll move my throttle all the way back and also fully press the right rudder button and press the trigger. I'm done with calibration. Now I can start playing a game. And the controller is working. I can use the fly stick, throttle, and rudder just fine. The next game I'm going to set up is Descent. When you get to the main menu, select Options. Go down to Controls. Select the Joystick option. Now you are asked to calibrate the joystick. Follow the instructions for Joystick 1 the same way we did on Aces of the Pacific. After calibration, move down and select Customize Above. Here, at the bottom, there is a section called Axes. For pitch up slash down, I'll select it and move my fly stick up or down. Then for turn left slash right, I'll select it and then move my fly stick to the right or left. Now for slide left slash right, which is the same as strafing, I want to map these to my controller's rudder. So I'll select it and press either the left or right rudder button. You may have to set invert to yes or no for this. It all depends if left and right are inverted when you play the game. Finally, I'll move down to throttle, select it, and I'll move my throttle up or down. I'm done with the mapping, so I'll hit escape. Escape again to get to the main options. Now we need to calibrate the second joystick, which is a throttle and rudder on my controller. So go to calibrate joystick again. I'll go through joystick one calibration again for my flight stick. Now when prompted for joystick two calibration, I'll do the same thing I did for Aces of the Pacific. To move upper left, I'll move my throttle all the way forward and also fully press the left rudder button. When asked to move my joystick to the lower right, I'll move my throttle all the way back and also fully press the right rudder button. And to center, I'll leave the throttle in the middle and not press any rudder buttons. The controller configuration is now done and we can start playing the game. When playing, the fly stick is working fine. To move forward, I just move the throttle forward. To straight left, I'll press the left rudder button, the right button to strafe right, and to move backwards, I move the throttle backwards. Now let me show you how to calibrate Flight Simulator 5. When the game is loaded up, click on Options, then Preferences. Click on the joystick button. For the joystick 1 drop-down, select Aileron and Elevator. Then for joystick 2, Select Throttle and Rudder. Now click on the Calibrate button. Flight Simulator has a much easier calibration process. To calibrate, leave the flight stick alone. Move the throttle all the way back and don't touch the rudder. Then just hit OK to confirm. And hit OK again. We can confirm that the controls are working in this area. If I move the rudder, this bottom arrow moves. 
Depending on how far I press the rudder will determine the position of this arrow. If I move the fly stick to the left and right, then the top arrow will move. If I move the fly stick up and down, then this middle arrow will also move up and down. And when I move the throttle, then the throttle indicator at the bottom right will also move. You can see the airplane moving forward because I push the throttle forward. I move it back and the airplane will stop. So everything works and I can now start flying. Now, not all games support the throttle and rudder, and you will only be able to use the flight stick for those games. Jet Fighter 2 is one of those games. To get its joystick settings, I'll enter Free Flight. Go into Info and select Joystick Settings. I set the joystick to On, and then select Calibrate. On the Calibration screen, I first select the Center option and hit Enter. On the bottom left box, I'm giving instructions to center the joystick and hit Enter. I do that and then some text saying center set appears in the box. Next, I'll select the limits option and hit enter. I'm asked to move the joystick all the way around to its outermost limits. So I'll do just that. And if you look at the bottom right box, you can see dots representing the outer limits of my flight stick. When I'm done moving around the flight stick, I'm also told in the bottom left box to go back and reset the joystick center. So I'll go back to the center option. I'll leave the flight stick in its center position and hit enter and select Save All Changes. Now I'm done calibrating the flight stick for Jet Fighter 2. Let me test out the joystick in the game. Again, this game does not support throttle and rudder controls, so I'm going to have to use the keyboard controls for them. And the flight stick is working just fine. To use rudder controls on this game, I have to use the X and Y key on the keyboard. Finally, let me show you how to set up controls in LucasArts X-Wing. When loading up the game, skip all these intro sequences and you will be asked to calibrate the controller. Follow the calibration instructions just as you would any other game. This game also doesn't support throttle and rudder controls, so you won't be asked to calibrate those and you will have to use a keyboard. Later re-releases of the game did support throttle controls, but this is the original DOS release, which does not. So here I am in game, and the fly stick is working just as it should. I would also like to mention that there is a way to get your throttle working in this game. There is a free DOS utility that will map your throttle to the game's throttle keyboard mappings. This utility is called XW Joy Redux. I'll provide a link to it in the description, but let me show you how you use it. You need to copy the file called xwjoy.com to a folder on your DOS install. Then run xwjoy.com and you will be asked to calibrate the throttle. Follow the instructions and you're done. You will have to run this game before running X-Wing, but you won't have to recalibrate every single time because calibration settings will be saved. Now, if I move my throttle, there should be some keyboard keys that should be appearing here in DOS. And now we can see the keyboard keys that represent the throttle controls in X-Wing being typed out. This confirms it's working, but the ultimate test is to actually use it in game. Here I am in game. And when I move the throttle, you can see the text notifications below indicating the throttle changes. I also want to let you know that you can pretty much use all the buttons on your fly stick in AO46. This can be done through the course button key remap function. It gives you the ability to map a button on the controller to a keyboard key. However, I really don't find this feature very helpful because it really needs to be done on a per game basis. And per game remaps are not possible. Also, any remaps you create will be erased once you exit the core. But if you want to try it out, I'll show you how it works. Okay, so I have the fly stick, throttle, rudder, and four button set up, and I want to use the extra button my fly stick has. Let's say I want to set button five to the T key on my keyboard, and also button six as the Y key. You can do this by first bringing up the core's menu, and then go to button slash key remap for game. On the screen, you are asked to press the button slash key to change. So I want to change what button 5 on my joystick does, so I'll press it. After pressing button 5, I'm asked to press the button to map to on the same pad or key on a keyboard. I want to map it to a key on my keyboard, and the key I want to map it to is the T key. So I'll press T on my keyboard. Then I'm asked to press another button I want to change. This time, I want to change button 6's function. 
and I want to change the button six function to the Y key on my keyboard. So first I'll press button six. And on the next screen, I'll press Y on my keyboard. I'm asked again to change another button, but I'm done. You can keep going if you want to change more buttons, but to finish, just hit enter on your keyboard. I'll exit the Mr. Menu. And here I am in DOS now. If I press button five on my joystick, some T's should appear in DOS and they do. And if I press button six on my joystick, I should see some Y's appearing and they do too. So as you can see, this can be a really useful feature if it could be improved upon, but I understand the difficulty of making this work on a per game basis. So that's how you set up a fly stick in AO486. I hope this video helps you out. If it did, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.